Got a few more pieces on now. We got the that's the motor bracket, and then this is uh, like a jack shaft. guards got the oil oil tray up here underneath the ram right now it's uh seems to be pretty smooth so I'm just looking at this uh, jack shaft here Not sure whether I'm gonna pull that apart and make sure everything inside there looks good. I'm not sure if it's a bushings or, or bearings. It's getting there. So if there's a needle bearing set on either side. what's uh, going on in there pretty uh, you know pretty decent just clean them up and solve it and got them oiled up now and get to oil around it all there I lost the battery and I was uh, going to show quite a bit more of the assembly of this but um, Today was uh, get the Atlas Shaper back the other day, and I uh, couldn't video a lot of it. So a lot of this I've already shown. So basically, we just motor and the jack screw on. Got the table on now. We got a temporary uh, temporary power source there right now. The tables. Uh, We got about five thou a drop out here at the end, so I gotta verify. There's there was some spacers in behind these keepers. I'm not sure whether I've got them flipped top to bottom. I have to measure those next. And uh, so we got the po uh, motor on there. And what's What's nice is I'm using the power source I use uh, pr pretty much for all my three phases. This uh, this box here, which is powered out of the lathe, out of a VFD. So as I uh, want to move, it's going to be nice for setting up the shaper actually, because um, you want to be able to bump it just to make sure everything's good. So. I'm just pushing that start button and you can see that I can inch inch the ram out I got it set up to quite travel quite a bit right now but you know just to check your start and stop positions and Actually, quite handy. Show a shot of it running here. And like I say, what's nice is they can bump it back. I mean, most guys just. What you do is you just turn the wheels, turn the wheels by hand, but it's nice to be able to bump it. So the next thing on this is to uh, understand if we got something going on with this table, or if it's just uh, I got quite a bit of slop in the bottom. So 
I'm going to take that apart and see what's going on. So I'm trying to figure out this 5 thou drop here. And it took the keeper off the top. This is the table. The keeper goes down here. And you probably won't be able to see it. But there's there's a step there and originally like that bar clamp just holding it there so I can measure it but originally these these spacers there was one in the top and one in the bottom and they're, they're about 12 I don't know maybe 10 thou um, they're both the same, top and bottom. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and get a uh, measurement on what that step is. See if we can see if we can pull the top of the top of the table up. So I'm trying to measure this step in here. Looks like it's only about four or five thou, which would obviously just being twelve would bring that quite a bit up. Measure it one more time here. Kind of hard because I'm trying to keep the bottom. tip in the base of the indicator or depth micrometer sorry yeah that's showing three I'm going to shoot for probably six thou. Just to try it out, what I'm going to do is uh, get some little pieces of shim stock here.
gonna keep the gonna keep the twelve in the bottom. So I've been playing with the keepers on the back of the table here and some spacers. Trying to figure out what I need in the back there to get this table straightened out. So well, that's a one thousand indicator on there. See if I can get a better shot of that tighter. Yeah, that's a little better. That's fully extended on the ram. So it looks like about two thou now. took a slightly different approach here and then just guessing at it what I've done is I've got the table off again and um, what I'm doing is I'm measuring between where the keeper goes and this way now this is just a milled surface but it, you know it, over usage it's it's fairly smooth it's definitely not scraped or anything like that so it's not even ground I don't think but anyway, um, so I'm measuring this depth here, just with the depth of my uh, mic, both sides, and then what I'm going to do is I'll mic the thickness of uh, this, which I'm calling the, uh, this is kind of like the uh, saddle on a bridge port, and I'm not sure what the name of it is actually got the manual here so these both top and bottom and I got the depths off of here these are within about five tenths they're at five uh, 549 thou within a half a tenth there so I think I want probably I'm gonna shoot for a thou maybe a thou and a half clearance Good thing I cross-referenced it because uh, on the uh, depth micrometer I had uh, 549 when it's actually 449 because when I was re uh, measuring this cross slide here. Running about 4.59. Yeah, 
Okay, it's running 459. And the depth is running 449. So actually the uh, those 12,000 shims should be pretty good. The originals that were in there that would give it uh, you know roughly 2,000 clearance. probably hear the grinder in the background. Um, this is the uh, top gib or the keeper on the back of the table and I just wanted to clean this up. I got a new shim and I just want to make sure that I've got no wear in this compounding my problem here so what I did was I just stoned it up and then uh, just dusted off. This is the exposed side where the socket headed cap screws obviously go. So just clean that up to give it a good reference parallel. And now I'm going to flatten this out, make sure this is all uh, uh, parallel and uh, straight there. Well, as, uh, as is normally the case when you get close, you uh, push to get it over the edge. So. I haven't got any T-nuts, I, I haven't got the uh, moving jaw for the vise, so uh, this is my uh, my setup, don't judge, on uh, just going to try and uh, clean a little spot up on this hunk of steel here and uh, see what we can do. She's alive. 